What's up guys, Evil D here, and today I'm going to be playing a little bit of Perfect Dark, just because I'm always speaking about this game, it's a game from my childhood, it's actually an N64 game, um, and I figured that what I'm going to start doing now on with series, rather than teaching Esperanto in a linear fashion, I'm actually going to be teaching just aspects of the language, so say particular verbs or particular um, sentence constructions or whatever. Now in this particular lesson, I'm going to be teaching just the accusative case related to time. Now it's not going to be a very long lesson, it'll probably be only like 5, maybe 8 minutes, but it should help you a little bit with understanding time. Now, I am playing with a keyboard at the moment, so I will probably suck massively. Now the first thing you have to understand is when you're speaking about time, most beginners to Esperanto, they'd say, for instance, I stand for two hours. They'd use the word dum because it can mean for, while, or during, okay? So, I stand for two hours, they would say, mi stardas dum uh, du hodoi, okay? But what you, can un what you need to understand is with the accusative case, yes, it's used for uh, the object of a transitive verb, but it's also used for measurements. And as we know, time is a measurement. So, what you can then say is, me start us do hodoing, okay? So I stand for two hours. Now you notice that hodoi has become hodoing. What we've done there is we've dropped the dum and we've simply said that, well, do hodoi is a measurement, so we can put that in the accusative case. So me start us dum do hodoi and me start us do hodoing actually means the exact same thing in Esperanto. So based on that, let's, okay, I'll just, oh. <laughs> I've just opened the door, showed her my gun, and then closed the door. I need to punch her and just take her card from memory. Yes! And I remember that I don't have to punch her, but I always did as a child for some reason, so I'll continue doing that. And I'll punch that window, because that's something else I did. Okay, so, how would you say then, using what I just taught you, I travelled for two hours, travelled to past tense here, um, and don't use dum. Mi veturis du hodon. Mi veturis du hodon. And how would you say, I stood for two hours? Again, it's past tense. Mi stardis du hodon. Mi stardis du hodon. Oh my god, this is really hard to aim with a keyboard. But it's awesome at the same time. <laughs> okay. And how would you say, um, uh, I will run for two hours. Mi kudos du hodon. Mi kudos du hodon. Okay, now I'm hoping you've basically got that down pat. Basically, what you're doing is you're just replacing dum for the accusative case when reflecting, well, when talking about time. However, there is other points where you will um, use it and it's not so um, intrinsically obvious. Now, another one of those is, for instance, you'll hear a lot of Espanas when they're in a conversation, they'll say, uno momenton, and it's basically just a way of saying um, AFK, okay. But what that there, you'll notice that momento is actually in the accusative case from, and, oh, can I open this? Oh, hello, who's shooting me? Um, and why that is, is because it's actually a shortened sentence, plus it's talking about a duration of time. So, the duration of a time is the momento. So you're saying, uno momento, so one moment. So it's in the accusative case. But it's also a shortened phrase for attendo uno momento, okay? Now, the reason, as you know in Esperanto, you can drop parts of sentences that aren't needed, and that's obviously one of those points where it's um, understood. So you don't need to mention the attendo part. Now, just so you know, attendo just means it's a command or a um, a request to wait. Okay. So attendo uno momento is another point where you'll see um, the accusative case being used to reflect time. Now there is another point. Now this one's even more harder for English speakers to understand. And basically what I say is don't try to understand it too much, except just remember that the accusative case can be used for measurement and time is a measurement. So if you're talking about a measurement of time, you use the accusative. But here's a point where it will get a little bit like hard to understand. You'll see, and this it's almost always exactly like this, whenever you use poste or antawe after a measurement of time, the measurement of time is always in the accusative case, okay? So for instance, you'd say, um, uno tagon antawe mi fadis tion. So one day ago, I did this, okay? Come here, elevator. And it will always be in the accusative case. So if you use antawe or poste directly after a measurement of time, just remember to put that time in the accusative case. So you could say, for instance, um, uh, du tago in poste uh, mi fados tion. So 
uh, two days later, um, I will do that, okay? Or you could say, um, Uno tagon antawe mi manjis tion. So one day ago, I ate this. So remember, the tagon, or whatever you are using for measurement, has to be in the accusative case. Um, it's just easier to remember that if it's going to go before antawe or poste, and I mean directly before, and it's a measurement of time, then just use it. Um, uh, in the accusative case. Now, as you get better at these, you'll start to just realize, oh yeah, that's a measurement of time, so you'll slap that in the accusative case. But yeah, it's usually, any time you can use dum, you can use the accusative regarding time, okay? Now, <laughs> take that shot you in the arm, my friend. How awesome is this game for like its age, man? I was playing this when I was a kid, like it's still good now. I, uh, I, I love this game, I love it. Anyway, so yeah, that's the main moments where you would use the accusative with time, so we'll just practice a tiny little bit before we reach the end of this. So how would you say, wait one moment? Uno momenton. Or you could say, attendo uno momenton, but no one does that. Just uno momenton. And how would you say, um, I walked uh, for three days, walked is past tense. Mi iris tri tagoin. Awesome. And whoop, how would you say um, I am standing for three hours? Or uh, I know it sounds weird in English, but to say I'm standing for three hours. Mi stardas tri hodoin. Okay, so I've reached the end of this random little lesson. If you've liked it, give it a like, share it around for your friends who are learning Esperanto, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video. In the next video. Video. <laughs> I forgot to tell you I'm going to kill you. <laughs>